Shiv, what, what is your title at Pepsi and, and what do you do there? Uh, my title is um, Head of Digital for PepsiCo America's Beverages um, and uh, everything that we do in digital across paid, owned and social media uh, rolls up to me. Okay, yeah. and you just kind of come into that position, so I guess you're getting your feet wet and kind of learning, learning the ropes there. So what does that mean kind of day to day? What do you, what do, you do? Um, well, well, firstly, I think it's important to mention I'm, I'm extremely lucky to have a, a, a very talented and very strong team, which makes my life uh, a little easier. Uh, but really what it comes down to is figuring out how we can best leverage digital in all its forms, especially as the landscape is changing so quickly, uh, to, to build our brands further and, and to drive revenue um, and to see how it fits into the broader marketing mix. Absolutely. So I've got a couple questions for you. Some have come in via uh, Twitter and Facebook, and we've also posted a blog to try to get some, some user questions. Um, the first one is, there was a quote um, that you gave at a Huffington Post event in New York City, and the quote was about how Pepsi picks social, agency, uh, yeah, social agencies. So you said that, you, that Pepsi hasn't figured out exactly the right mix. Those were your words, the right mix. And that um, social agencies come to social media from different places and different starting points. So I guess I'm wondering what is the right mix and um, what is kind of the whole picture that you're looking for that you think social agencies should be moving towards? You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't think we've figured out as yet. I wish I had between uh, uh, that, uh, that panel and today. But what I would say is when I say different agencies come to it from different starting points, what I really mean is uh, there are certain agencies like PR agencies who are extremely strong at managing uh, you know, key influencer dynamics. And they trained communicators from everything to manage, you know, getting a message out to managing a crisis, they can handle those pieces very well. On the other hand, a digital agency, for example, may be much stronger in creating deep, engaging social experiences where it's not just about uh, the voice, but creating a, a holistic social experience that has different kinds of engagement. Um, you then also have a niche social uh, media agency that may be the strongest in terms of knowing the strengths of the platforms, knowing maybe you know uh, what social media culture is and integrating in that, and having personal social media relationships. Um, and then you even have the big TV agency that maybe uh, they know the brand from a holistic standpoint the, me the best and feel therefore they should be the connection point to consumers in the social space. So everyone is coming at in different places. Right. It's, it's really up to us to, to find the right mix based on what we're trying to accomplish. Right, absolutely. So the next question, and, and you mentioned this in your talk just a few minutes ago here, um, that experiences, the idea that experiences are remembered more than, than the brand. So how do, we, how do we kind of cultivate those experiences? How would a, even a small organization work towards cultivating experiences rather than just brand awareness? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, I don't think any of us, or at least I haven't met anyone who wakes up in the morning and says, I hope I have an amazing brand experience today. You know, it, it just doesn't happen, at least uh, uh, not that I've seen. Um, we live our lives around consumer experiences. Uh, you know, um, the, the interesting thing for a brand is how can it play a meaningful contributing role to enhance that consumer experience? So the consumer experience is always should be prioritized over the brand experience. In terms of how does this work for organizations of various sizes, it really starts with you know the fundamentals of marketing, which is. Um, how are you providing value to your consumers? How are you engaging with them in a meaningful sense? How are you enhancing what they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to do themselves, whether, whether that may be entertainment or transact or uh, uh, education? So that's sort of how I see it. What's interesting is it's gotten a lot easier for companies of all sizes to touch their consumers in more meaningful, supportive ways in a more real-time fashion, thanks to social media. So the opportunity is there. But it's all about knowing what perm permission do we as brands have to participate and support versus trying to uh, shout logos at them or throw logos on their faces. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that kind of ties into this next question here. And it's another point from your, your talk just now. Um, you said you want to get 
consumers pass sort of just this awareness and get them into deep action. So I guess by cultivating these experiences, these positive experiences that are benefiting the consumer as well, how do you get them to experience that, have that experience, but then move into some sort of action on behalf of your brand? Yeah. You know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm very much the optimist and, and maybe too much so, but I, I, I believe very simplistically um, in, in the notion of if I provide value to a consumer uh, in that consumer experience, um, as long as they know it's coming from me or my brand or one of my brands, um, they will remember and they will uh, uh, sort of, b it will serve to build loyalty to the brand and eventually transactions. It may not be commercial transactions the very next morning. It could be over a longer time period, but that's how you build brand equity. And the best example I'll give is, um, uh, you know, so I work for Pepsi, but I've liked Pepsi as, uh, as a company and the Pepsi brand specifically for a long time, going back to the mid 80s uh, or the early 80s. And the reason that was the case is because I, I loved Michael Jackson and, and he had this really deep, amazing cool tie with Pepsi <laughs> now any marketer sitting at Pepsi at the time you know uh, would, would have been hoping to get a return on the Michael Jackson investment in that year itself mm -hmm. I didn't give him that return then right. definitely not 30 but 30 l years later whatever I definitely am even in not as an employee but as a consumer mm -hmm. so one has to look at the longer term if you want to be building a brand or connecting with your consumers in a multi-year period. And that's where social media really plays mm -hmm. the biggest role. It builds brand equity, not just more transactions. I guess my question in regards to that is how would someone that is sort of taking on the social media role for a company, how would you convince your boss of that, that, that the results may not come immediately, they may be measured 30 years down the road, you know, you're not gonna get that instant conversion. So how do you have an idea or a pitch for small organizations or maybe individual bloggers you know, that are working with a small team that have very limited budgets, how do you convince the, the decision makers to move into social media? Yeah, well, I, I mean, firstly, I think it's, it's practically impossible to convince something that there's value out of it 30 years hence, and I'm, I'm not trying to imply that that's possible. It's, it's sort of more by chance. The, the way I would do it is, is, you know, it all needs to start with your marketing and your business objectives, and that doesn't matter the size of your organization. And, and in my book, I actually focus a lot of it on small organizations and less on uh, big ones. Um, but if the objective is right, um, then just as no one questions today uh, the need to have a customer service telephone number, mm -hmm. you cannot question the need to have connections with your consumers in social media. Right. How you leverage it you know, can be the difference between it being a good investment or a bad investment, but it's so pervasive that it's, it's, it's like having a, a company or a retail uh, business, but without a retail store. Right. I, I think it's very much at that point. So, so you would say that social media is, is needed regardless of the organization? Yes, the yeah. What matters more is how you use it. And how you use it may mean a lot, doing a lot in a given day or, or very little in, in a given week or a given month. Um, yeah. And and uh, there are enough case studies and I think enough proof points today about their, their value, but you have to tie it to the business objective. Is it awareness? Is it sales? Is it loyalty? Is it CRM database building? Um, what really helps, and just to mention one more thing, is it's a lot cheaper typically in social media than other forms of digital marketing. It's cheaper, for example, to have a page on Facebook than it is to build a website. It's cheaper to buy uh, those self-service ads on Facebook than it is to buy display advertising. It's cheaper to monitor a page than it is to go knocking on doors or doing a telephone campaign. So, well, I appreciate it, Shiv. Thanks for coming out. Your talk was great here, and I think um, our audience in general will benefit from this interview. So, I, I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. And if you have any questions, my Twitter handle is Shiv Singh. And also pick up his book at Amazon. It's a it's